Hello YouTube. In this video I want to talk about 3D rendering and how I uh, was trying to make it and failing a lot. Um, in this video I want to uh, explain 3D rendering in a way um, that you can implement it yourself. Why I want to, what the, and the reason why I want to do this is because I find there to be uh, a lack of this on the internet. I couldn't find it. Um, one thing that I did find and was probably one of the big reasons I was able to do it in the, in the end is this series from Ken Academy called Pixel in the Box. And they have this section on uh, rendering. We have a lot, but this is, this is the one you need. Um, this is going to come in very helpful and what you also need to know is to do some uh, vector math like how to multiply vectors and stuff like that so you can just type in uh, vectors and picture in a box here in Academy. so um, those are the two things like that you need to kind of know or have watched and then we are going to get far um, because like if you try to look up like 3D like 3D rendering on Google or something, you the only thing you get is like explanations like how already already written libraries work and not how to make it from scratch. And if there are some that make it from scratch, they like have like 20 pages of codes or something. Well, that isn't at all what you need. Like I did it in like uh, like. Um, like the actual actual 3D rendering and stuff, like here, this is this in the camera and this in the vector class, like and no it's like, it can be so simple and I'll, I'll explain all this um, it can be so simple and uh, it can be simple, is what I'm trying to say, and they and I find that a lot of times they complicate it on the on the internet. To well, that isn't at all what what you need. So my goal is in the end that you will be able to like implement this yourself. And to do this, I do, I I only want to like uh, explain the most important things. Like, and there are two two things that I want to explain. Um, and I want to skip over all the vector multiplication and matrix multiplication and how to do rotation and all that kind of stuff. You can find that out on yourself later. I just want you to be able to like make a triangle in the end. So, a good start is the camera obscura to try to explain how 3D ray casting works because this is 3D ray casting. Um, I don't know. This is how movies do it. I don't really know how video games do it. I maybe they also do ray casting. Maybe they have like another technique. But in movies, they do it this way, and you can also kind of like make. Maybe it's a little bit slow, but you can like make a, like a small game this way. Um, but this is how the camera obscura works and 3D rendering, 3D ray casting works very similar, but with like uh, a few uh, differences. Like, and there's also a little bit of an analogy to make with the eye and 3D rendering, but that those also work a little bit different. But I will get to that. Uh, and also how the mathematics work. I will explain it all. Um, so, this is the camera obscura. You get a, 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 a array of light, it goes through a hole, uh, and then it hits the back of like the camera. So like this is the camera hole, and like it hits it. You can see it is inversed. In, you can see it like upside down. You've probably seen this before. What they do in 3D rendering is like a little gimmick. Like if you could like take this back wall, and like push it push it to the front 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 and outside like over here 
you can maybe imagine that if you like would go through this like the light would be it wouldn't be flipped like that's one thing they do the 3d rendering this this part is uh i mean it, it still works the same you could still make a ray caster and like do it over here and then just flip the image but the, you can take that flipping thing out you can do that in the real world but you can do that with 3d uh, ray tracing you can like put it over here the other thing that's different is like in real life light like goes from the sun like hits your image it doesn't work uh, that way uh, in, in 3d ray tracing um, the reason I uh, I like here all the time this is because it would take too much computation power but I also think it's just easier to do it this way what happens in 3d ray tracing is like this part uh, like this for if, if you want to like uh, know what color this part of the image is you uh, you make the light or the ray and you like make it go through this and like you would see like oh this ray oh it hits it hits the 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 air so it would be blue it hits the sky so it would be blue and if you like go from here like see where this intersects something oh you see oh it's the ground so, or, or the grass so it would be like brown or green so this is how a ray tracer kind of looks and I also want to make like the analogy with the ISO. This is like your camera hole or camera point. This is uh, usually called the, the camera. And it is like the image on which it wants to draw. Like here would be a cloud or something. Like a little blue cloud. I don't know. I know clouds are white. but um, And this would be like your eye. And this would be like, uh, was it called your retina? I don't know, the, bit, the the part where the image of the eye is on. And I want to make another analogy. Like eyes don't work like they do in 3D ray tracing. But there are similarities. So I want you to imagine this. An eye has nerve endings like on the back of it. So if like a little bit of light from the sky goes through your eye and like hits this nerve ending, your I will tell you, oh, this this uh, part like is blue. This blue light over here, this part of the image is blue. And now, like, uh, and as you can see, like it's in front of you, like not not over here. Like this is like the camera hole. Um, and as you can see, like the image isn't on the back of it, but, like in the front. It would like go not through an, like a nerve ending or something, but like through a pixel. So it would like go through this pixel and hit like this cloud that is like blue or red or whatever the cloud's color is. And like this this pixel would like get a certain color. And like if it like would go through this pixel, like you would cast a ray, like like I said, uh, you this you make the light yourself. It isn't like this thing like makes rays. No no no. This, this makes a ray, so like you make a ray that goes through this, you see where does it go, where does it go, oh, it hits the ground. So this will become brown. And like, I would like go this way or something. Um, so that's how you like define, like I'm doing all of this in two dimensions right now. Like, no, it's, now it's a line, but like you could imagine it would be like a square image. And to, like you could do this for all the pixels, and like the eye, it would like uh, get on all the nerves. So they like have a nice little image over here. Like one of these also has like an interactive one, but I like can't find it right now. With one of these star thingies, it is. Um, and you can like see this is your camera or your camera hole. And it would like uh, like go through this pixel, and in this case, like it hits the yellow part of the house. So like this pixel would become yellow. Okay, now a little bit more to the math. Um, there are two calculations that you need to do, and I will explain the math behind it. But first, let me just explain how the calculations work. Um, like this is your whoop. 
and like this 2D again. So like you want to draw like on your like thing you want to draw like this this line. So like this this has to become black or something like this part. You can like uh like and and say you like want to calculate this pixel, like you would cast a ray through this. And you can see of course like this doesn't hit, so like this would need to become white or something or um, something like that. Like this would have to become black. Um, to, to, to see that this has to become white, you need to do two calculations. First, you need to see that like um, this this point to this point, it forms a line. Like that, that that's something you need to notice. Like this is a line. Like two points define a line. I will go to 3D soon. Um, two points define a line. Um, and the same is true for this little piece of line. It also has two points, like over here and over here. And that also like defines a line. And what you need to do is two things. You need to calculate this point, where does it intersect the line? And the second calculation that you need to do is, is it located like on this line? So like with this, this line, uh, like it's, you need to see, oh, it's over here. And the second calculation is, oh, is it, in this case, it would be true, like, this case, and you see, like, oh, yeah, it is in the line. But in this case, but over here, not. Okay. So, you need to do some vector uh, uh, stuff to do this. Um, you can probably remember, you can... Uh, so, once you've calculated this, and then you need to somehow calculate, oh, is this point this line? Like, in this, like, in those Pixar in a Box series, they, like, explain this using weighted averages. And I will get to that in a second when I go to 3D, but I think in this case, for two dimensions, um, it's a little bit easier to, like, do it this way. You can, like, calculate how long this point is, and, like, how long like, this point and you can calculate how long this point is. And you can see, oh, like, and, and you can calculate, like, how long this line is. So this is maybe three. Whoop. This is, like, also maybe three. And, like, this is, like, uh, six uh, or something. Yeah, something. For this point to be in the line, in this line, um, it would have to be, like, both these lengths would have to be less than this length. So these had to both be like one or two or something like that. That's how you could calculate it. The, the sec and, and before you do that, like you still need to calculate like where there's some line. So you have to like calculate li like, okay. Um, but like, this is like what I don't want to explain. Like this kind of stuff that I, uh, I will explain it in 3D because that's those two calculations are very important, but like, uh, let's not get hung up here. I need to go like to the 3D version of this. And explain how that works. So imagine this is a triangle and like it's facing you. This, this triangle is directly facing you and like a little bit more to the front, like here is like the camera and it like casts really like through and like it would like hit it over here and then it like goes back out the other end and you can also like make a array over here and it would like go okay so like I said before like the um the line like has a like two points to find like a little a little line and like those two points you can also imagine like a really long line well the same is true for a triangle Three points in the triangle, uh, three points that like form a triangle, three points define a plane. And let, and like you can, because like you can, you need to like need some imagination for this. But like if you have one point and you can like imagine a plane, like it, it wouldn't be able to like get off that point, but it would be able to like rotate like in any direction, in, in, in any direction it could be. If you have two points, it can like only like ro uh, rotate around one axis, one axis anymore. And if you like have three points, like it's locked, it can't move anymore. So we have defined 
that plane. Like maybe it could like switch over or something. That would still be possible. Like face the other direction or something. But that's uh, that's uh, good uh, good enough. Um, but three points for triangle is enough. So you can like imagine a, like a big plane that's around it. Like it's endlessly long. I just draw it as a square, but like it's endlessly long. And in this case, like this ray like intersects over over here. And then you need to cut. Okay, so that's the first thing you need to do. The, those are the two calculations that I will explain very soon. First you need to calculate where is this intersection point and then you need to calculate is this intersection point within this triangle. And for this one of course it isn't true and for this one it is. So let's uh, get to it. And they also try to explain this in this like um, in this rendering part but here they only explain mathematical doing it with the mathematical formulas and you also need a way to like go from the like the, the only thing you have is points or they call it vectors the only thing you have is vectors or points and you need to like get, and the, in this video they, they only talk about it in mathematical formulas and that isn't uh, I don't know maybe I'm just bad at math but that isn't enough you need to like make a computer program out of it and to make it even worse in this last uh, part this last exercise I think they explain it wrong they like uh, I, I'm not gonna explain why they did it, did it wrong right now because the video will be long but the calculation they do over here I mean they get the right result but the way they get to that result is wrong I mean it is it is right but it's like it only works for like certain use cases for like certain cases of point so bad bad can can be but the rest is the rest is nice but like i said they only use mathematical formulas and they don't like give away to get to the program from the mathematical formulas to the program and like if you have my little my level of mathematics like I need to like a bridge. I need a little bridge for that, and that is why uh, I googled a little. Uh, I like found these two pages on the internet. Um, this one I found by you can, or you can just copy copy the URL. Uh, maybe I'll like put it in the description. I probably will, or else you can just like type it over. I know it's a lot of typing, but the first thing. Uh, uh, okay, so the first thing. I will explain this in a second. Um, first thing you need to do is like so calculate this intersection point. And for that you need this equation. Oh, this equation combined with this equation. And I will explain what all the numbers mean in a second. And for the second calculation, this one is even nicer, although this is in C sharp. Um, but uh, you need so you need to like I like to do cross products over here so you need to like uh, like translate that to the language you're using in my case I'm using JavaScript I'll explain in a sec um, but like they have like the three points of the triangle and like the point you want to see if you are like want to uh, if it's like in the triangle so this is the second calculation like I said First, do the calculation where is the point, just like with the line. First, you calculate where is it the point of intersection on the line, and then you calculate does it intersect with the little part of the line. So, uh, this is the easier one, and it's also just copy. So, you got you, like, you see you see dot products here, cross products. So, you need to like define those, and that's why you need to watch these videos. They will explain how to do cross products and dot products with vectors and how to do subtract subtraction and addition and all those because vectors it's like a combination of two numbers and like it's kind of funny I mean subtraction and addition is kind of uh, intuitive but there are a lot of other uh, things you can do with vectors that aren't quite so intuitive and he will explain how to do it and like this will explain this you can yeah, you can just like copy this over translate it to your language and i will show uh, my version 
this is my JavaScript version. Like, uh, you get uh, a triangle, and like this function is a part of a, a dot. So uh, this uh, I don't know, but like it's a part of the product. So like X, Y, and Z is like already defined. Um, so here, like here, this. That's in my point case. Uh, this is like the point. So that's how it works in my case. Um, and so it says that's uh, I do it a little bit in the wrong order. And the second thing you need to do is like get the intersection point. And that and that's this one. It's a little bit tricky to like uh, get right, but I will explain. What you see here is the equation of a line. And if you watch those Ken Academy videos, they talk about weighted averages and parametric functions. Well, this is uh, like the computer version of a parametric function. This is the parameter. And like, if you can imagine like, um, and with this weighted average thing, it's like you have two points and like you have this parameter T and like um, T defines like a third point on the line uh, like somewhere on this line of that is defined by p1 and p0 and like if like t would be zero it would the point would be on like uh p0 and it, it kind of depends like how you okay and if it would be one it would be on point one and if it's and if t is two it would be twice as far as p1 and if it's uh, like three three times as far five etc and if it would be negative it would be like the opposite of like if it's like negative one it would be like the opposite of where one is and what you need to do is like you can see here that the intersection is around the middle of this line so it need and so t is the so you need a point that is defined by like t 0 0.5 like t a half you can kind of see it's like maybe a little bit more than half so like maybe it's t 0 0.6 but like, but like you can see, like you plug t, like if you could, you, we can see it's like zero point six. So like, you do this, like you like you multiply. It's called scaling. But you like, you take p zero, you do vector addition of p one minus p zero, and that uh, which is was scaled by, in this case, like zero point six or something. But how do you get t? Like how do you know how far? It is like maybe it's the string is like over here and like it's t is like two or something. That they explain here. And let me explain what all these uh, uh, letters uh, mean. N. Um, did you remember that I say, did remember about uh, how three points define a plane, but like you could like switch it around? That isn't really too true. Because you like the like the which way around if it's like clockwise or anti-clockwise can like define which way it's facing. And uh, what they do with the vectors is like you can uh, this is kind of funny, but you like you can use or three points to define a plane or two vectors to define a plane. And and like, and with two vectors, you can define a third, define a third vector that is perpendicular to those, which is called the normal vector. So you need to like watch those vector videos once again, and they will tell you how to define the normal vector, which is just a third vector that is per perpendicular to the other two, which is uh, most often used. Like, usually, like points, uh, planes aren't defined by three points, but by uh, two vectors, which then imply a third normal vector, or like a point. Yeah, I don't know. But in any case, this n stands for the normal vector, which you can calculate from those three points. This dot means dot product. Take the dot product of this vector and this vector. These two uh, are. Um, 
are points uh, on the triangle in this case, I think. Uh, saying that right, yeah. Um, don't get confused between like these point ones and point twos and point zeros and like this thing. Um, here, uh, maybe they could have like chosen all the letters, but here I'm pretty sure they mean. Um, let's see if I'm getting this right. Um, do -do -do -do, do -do -do -do. Yeah, 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 it's like uh, P2 here. Uh, it's like. Uh, no, oh no, uh, maybe it's the line over here. Uh, um, okay. It's it is, this is a substitution thing, so you like. These are like. Uh, okay. This is like intersection point. So like this is a substitution thing. So you have like, you have to put this over here, and then I'll like make this out of it. But I'm pretty sure that these are uh, refer to like okay, okay, uh, to one of the, those points. I, I'll just get I get back to you in a second which points exactly they mean if it's like the, from a triangle or from a line. But you take the normal vector of a triangle you and then. You dot you dot product that with like the result of the vector that is the result of uh, subtracting this is vector subtract subtraction once again, and then you divide all that by the normal, um, and uh, and then dot it with v. And what is v? You ask. Um, that is um, you kind of need to see the. The, the the subtraction bit once again, but V in this case is just the line. Um, so and the line, the line from like point one to point zero to point one. So it's like uh, like it's um, you can see the subtraction here, like it's. This part is the same as this part. Okay, so P2 is uh, 0.2. In this case, is uh, okay. So put this like over here, over over here. Okay, so point zero is a line thing, so that's this thing. So point zero of the line is over here. So that's what I mean over here. I like here they use a small letter for some reason, but whatever. And point uh, two is like one of the three vertices of the triangle. Mm -hmm. This one. Um, P and P2 are known points on the plane, like P is the intersection point in this case that we are trying to calculate. Uh, and here, P2, one of the vertices of the triangle. So, uh, a little bit little bit tricky, but uh, P0, uh, refer, like they did a bad job with like this all this P stuff, but P0 is like a point on the line, and point 2 is like a triangle point. Here, see, it's this part of the equation. I'll, uh, it's on GitHub. I'll put the link in there. Just pause it here if you want to, like, take it over and uh, pause it. Pause this for a second, and you can, like, if you uh, don't want to copy it from GitHub. But uh, now, okay. So line point, triangle point. <laughs> Uh, take the normal and just dot it with that. Take the normal again, dot it with V. What is V? It's the line. Um, and how do you get the line? You take uh, point 0.1 and you subtract point 0.0. And this is, is kind of weird. 
but you kind of have to imagine like vectors sometimes you need to think about them as points sometimes you need to think about them as lines sort of sometimes they're sort of points sometimes they're sort of lines they're okay so they're actually they're always lines but they're always lines from the origin of like your space and um, if you like want to make a point a line like this these two point like this line over here you can see no that is also a vector but as you can see it is not uh located this line is not located at origin unless like p0 is origin but let's just say it's not at this point how do you like get this line like for that you need to like imagine these two points i i, I think this is very hard to imagine so I don't know, maybe don't even try but remember a line try to imagine like an origin point somewhere with two vectors like one pointing to this one one pointing to this one subtract those from each other like those two not vectors but those points that they're located from the origin subtract those two from you and then you get like i'm rambling a little bit here but then you get if you subtract those from each other, you like get another point and from the origin to that point is the vector that you and then you get this vector so i was probably okay this is very hard to follow i guess but point is if you subtract p0 from p1 you get this line and that is the and that is what they want here so they this v just means point one minus point zero and with this minus they mean vector subtraction subtraction and once you have done all that you still don't have an image because what you still need to do and uh this is the the very last bit i mean after that you can still do rotation all that kind of stuff but once you have done that and you know how to like get the intersection points no uh how to see if it's within the triangle you know all that stuff then you still need to do one last thing you need to generate your image and this is pretty easy to understand you go to each pixel um i've kind of hard coded it here so uh, so i still need to improve that but i still i've hard coded it in there so you can't rotate my, the camera at the moment my camera but you cast a ray through each pixel so you have this cast ray function um, and this cast ray function it returns the color of the thing that it hits first well, like i tried to just like yeah returns color um um yeah of the thing it returns the color of the thing and then you you store that color like and the color is just like an R, a G, and a B value. You store that color, and then you have like a two-dimensional array with colors. And well, you probably know how to make an image with that. Like I do here, like the fill style. Get the R, G. You you know what to do. I don't need to explain that. And then you get out with this nice-looking image. Oh, it's so gorgeous. And like on the internet, they show all these fancy things with shadows and stuff. That's like an old, older chapter. Like, uh, I'm just gonna rant. I mean, this is this is all I have. I have explained all that I wanted to explain, but I've tried to keep this as simple as possible, which uh, I didn't see like other tutorials do. They like immediately go to like how to do shadow and how to do all this kind of stuff. I mean, if you want to do shadow, you you have to do an additional ray cast from like the point of intersection to like the light source and see if like that that hits something. And if it doesn't, like the 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 way is the, the the way is free, like and it like light hits it. But all that kind of stuff 
you need to start from the basics and like I and all those other tutorials they they don't uh, they don't seem to understand it and I and I try to keep it like simple and this and like if you have the basics then you can like start adding stuff to that and as you can see I have still have a lot to do like I, I anti-aliasing and there's like a hundred and billion things that I still could do but I just do one thing and that is what all those other tutorials didn't understand you need to explain one thing and not a billion and not all those other billion things although lighting is pretty essential but ooh, it looks nice ooh, uh, it looks a lot better if it's li in this small thing looks less pixelated but thank you for watching see you next time